she's stuck. G'day everyone. If you don't know, my name is Morrigan and I've set myself one simple goal to try to increase my well-being by making one or two small changes every week to my lifestyle. So this week I'm concentrating on my diet. If you have been watching last week, I sort of tracked my diet and I knew already that my diet wasn't great. And so now I want to start addressing that. So specifically, I tried to make a breakfast recipe. So I've been seeing online a lot these things called Dutch babies, which if you don't know is essentially just what looks to be a sweet frittata. And they look pretty impressive, so I wanted to give it a go. I found a couple of different recipes and have basically just based what I'm making off of a couple of those. So the first thing I had to do before I start cooking anything in my oven is actually work out how to use it, which may sound silly, but a lot of the symbols on the front of my oven have worn off and they had done so before I moved into the house. So I don't know what a lot of the settings on my oven are. So previously when I've been cooking, if I've cooked anything in the oven, I've just turned the temperature dial 180 degrees the other way and hoped that that was somewhere around 200 degrees Celsius. But I really don't know. So in order to figure out how to work my oven and what each of the settings actually are, I just looked up my oven manual online and that was a little bit fiddly but not impossible to do. It maybe took five minutes. So the first thing I did was look up the side of the oven to see if I could find the model number there, but it wasn't there. So the next thing I did was just Google Bosch and pop out buttons. I can see the brand that my oven is and my oven has pop out buttons. So that's what I Googled. I had to look at a couple of different websites to find one that would actually give me my model number, but I found that on a website I don't recognize where it was part of a picture trying to sell the product. I went to Bosch and put in my model number and they didn't have a user manual, they just had an installation manual. So I just put in my model number and then Googled user manual and then it came up. And from there I was able to see what symbols should be on the front of my oven and what those symbols mean. I very roughly and not terribly artistically drew the symbols on the front of my oven. Now a couple of things to note. The first one is that while I was googling this I came across a couple of different people on Etsy selling art where they had simply put little symbols of the different oven features and then underneath a little blurb and they were using that as kitchen art so it's functional but it's also very useful and practical and so I've done one of those up for myself that I can put in the kitchen so I can understand what the different symbols mean and what they're good for. The second thing I want to mention is that if you don't want to draw on your oven that's totally fine you can actually buy decals and they don't seem to be terribly expensive so this is a pretty practical option and then the third thing I want to mention isn't practical at all while I was looking at oven symbols and what they mean, I stumbled upon this post by Dave, which I think is a UK television thing. I don't know whether it's a show or a channel, but it's hilarious, whatever it is. So this isn't useful at all. I just thought it was funny. So I found this recipe to be super beginner friendly. Um, it takes one bowl, everything is combined in one bowl, and then everything is cooked in one pan. So it also doesn't create a lot of mess. Firstly, I preheated the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, and I know where that is now, so I can do that. So in order to make the batter, you just combine four eggs, one cup of milk, one cup of flour, a tisp of vanilla, hopefully any of my 80s Disney babies will get that reference. A quarter of a tisp of salt, three tablespoons of sugar, and two tablespoons of melted butter. I melted the butter in the microwave, it was pretty easy. And then I measured it out once it was melted because it's much easier to measure out a liquid than it is a solid. I put all of those in the bowl and then I blended them. Now, I used a stick blender because that's what I have in my kitchen. I don't actually own a blender, but you can put it in a blender as well if that's easier for you. Once all of that was combined, I got an oven proof pan and I coated that in two tablespoons of melted butter and I made sure to go up the sides so that nothing would stick. And then I added my fruit. I used tinned apples and mulberries from a tree that I have. After that, I just poured the batter on and put it in the oven for 15 minutes. Now, while she was cooking, I cleaned up the kitchen. So 
I know that for me, it's not a good idea for me to put something in the oven or the microwave, etc., and wander off. I tend to forget that I've done it and then that leads to all problems and it's part of why I'm a little bit nervous about learning how to cook. So I know I need to stay in the kitchen. So what I did was I cleaned up the mess I'd just made. Specifically, I did the dishes and I wiped down the bench. So by the time she was done, um, everything was nice and clean. So when she came out of the oven, she was all puffed up, but if I do say so myself, she looked pretty impressive. I'm quite happy with the results of this for my first foray into, I wouldn't say serious baking, but baking. One of the things that did happen though, while she cooked up really nicely, even though I had taken the time to butter the side of the pan, she still stuck and I still struggled to get her out. And I don't understand why. So if anybody understands why she's stuck or what I did wrong here, can you please let me know in the comments so that I can correct that and have an easier time the next time. I've seen several recipes where they recommend dusting a Dutch baby with either powdered or casted sugar once she's done. And that's a great recommendation. I absolutely did that and it tasted great. One of these, feeds me for four days. I can quarter it and eat this for breakfast for four days. So for the effort it took, it goes pretty far and I'm pretty happy with it. So I would give this one four stars out of five and I will absolutely be making her again with different fruit. If I can make it, you can make it because I have never cooked in my life. This is totally new for me. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I don't know what the next video is going to be but hopefully I make some more progress. Thanks for watching.